Deus é brasileiro, they say in Brazil. God is Brazilian. And Brazilians are just as certain that their team will win the next World Cup. Welcome to the land of football and faith. However, away from the glamour of the big stadiums, soccer provides more than just a hope of a title. It offers kids a better life. The German soccer coach Sascha Bauer has already made a name for himself in South Africa and Mozambique, promoting what he calls social soccer. Now he's been sent by the German aid agency GIZ and the German Soccer Federation to train coaches in Brazil who work with young players from the slums. To get a better idea of the conditions there, he visits the favelas on the outskirts of Rio de Janeiro. You can only really understand how the coaches work, how good they are, and what problems they have to contend with when you visit them and see what they do every day. Vila Alianza is one of Rio's most dangerous favelas, about an hour and a half's drive from the center of the city. With a new soft-touch approach, Brazilian police have brought the slums surrounding the prosperous southern suburbs under control. But here, the drug gangs still rule. Franklin Ferreira has developed a social soccer project in Vila Alianza, all on his own. You can see for yourself, some of them don't have any sports shoes. They play in their socks. I can't stop them playing, or they would just hang out on the streets. Come along, I'll introduce you. Franklin Ferreira coaches about 150 kids a week, many of them neglected by their families and the state. They're grateful for his commitment. Ferreira's aim is to give the kids a direction in life without destroying their dream of one day becoming a soccer star, like the legendary Ronaldinho or the current Brazilian idol Neymar. I tell them, you may not be a Ronaldinho or a Neymar, but you could become a good sports teacher, lawyer or bricklayer. My mission is motivating them on the pitch and in life. To be a soccer idol is one thing, but the most important role is that of the coach, the person who's involved with the kids every day. That leads to dialogue and a continuous discussion about ideas and values, such as mutual respect and helping each other. Before the session starts, it's always the same ritual. Everyone help pick up the trash from the pitch. That's important to the coach. There's a general lack of environmental awareness in Brazil, especially in the favelas. His organization is called Cracas da Vida, Cracks in Life. While heavily armed gangs circle the perimeter fence, Ferreira wants to give the kids on the soccer field a different perspective. There's a lot of violence here, mostly used to assert control over the neighborhood. But I tell my kids that their lives should be different. There is another way of doing things. And soccer is a key element. Soccer is the greatest dream of Brazilians. Every kid wants a ball. Brazilians are born with that desire. That's why we should use soccer to socialize the kids. Ferreira also comes from the slums, but he won a scholarship and became a sports teacher. And for 10 years, he financed this NGO with his own salary. Eventually, he managed to find a multinational to sponsor his project and buy all the kids' team jerseys. The coach's aim is not to produce future soccer stars, 
but to teach the kids fair play in relating to one another. Foul. Stay calm, take a deep breath. That's typical of our coaching. This is amateur sport, not professional coaching. Our methods are adapted to the conditions here. This experience helps Sasha Bauer plan his coach training program. Franklin Ferreira has registered to take part. Just a few kilometers away in Guadalupe, apartment blocks have been constructed for low-income families. This is currently a no-go area ruled by drug gangs. But at the very center, there's a soccer oasis. Bola pra frente means literally moving the ball forward. It's also the name of one of Brazil's largest NGOs dedicated to the concept of social soccer. Sasha Bauer works for this institute. Some 800 kids from the area are coached in soccer and their personal development is encouraged. Bola Pra Frente is a success story. Almost all the participating kids finish school and then do vocational training. The institute is financed by sponsorship. For instance, a large sports goods manufacturer donates the jerseys and footwear. Assisted by a social worker and one of the institute's coaches, Sasha Bauer is developing a new method. Reino Social, social coaching. The aim is to improve the standard of soccer coaching for young kids and teenagers and to teach them social skills at the same time. Many organizations start with soccer coaching to harness the kids' enthusiasm, and then they add a class. But we're trying to incorporate this into the coaching session itself, so that the kids don't feel they're getting an additional lesson. Eleven-year-old Gustavo comes here three times a week after school. The kids have to show that they are attending school regularly if they want to take part. The coaches are taking stock. Here too, the emphasis is on the game. Fairness is an essential part of that. Our coach always says, when there's a quarrel here and the other guy hits you, how do you react when he's big? Then he may provoke you in the bus and pull a knife on you and stab you. No violence on the pitch, otherwise you're suspended for a month. The kids can choose a second subject. Gustavo picked music. But his dreams for the future are rather different. I would like to join the Navy. That's a good job. You can earn a lot of money, then I can support my family and later be able to feed my own wife and children. In the six favelas served by the Institute, there is poor housing, no drainage, no garbage collection, shocking conditions. Many people here are sustained by their faith. There are 30 churches serving 6,000 residents, most of them Pentecostals. That includes Gustavo's family. <laughs> He has six brothers and sisters. The family lives in a single small room. Life is incredibly hard, but the family sticks together. 
The foundation of our family is God. With his help, we get through life. Lots of people think you can't achieve anything if you come from a favela. But that's not true. There are lots of people here who have dreams and fight for them. All the children go to the Bola Pra Frente Institute after school. It's very important to the family, with a view to the children's future. Neither of the parents have any education. They always wanted their children to have that opportunity, and their dream is gradually coming true. This is a victory for me. The certificates from classes the children have taken at Bola Pra Frente. We collect everything. We've been very lucky. Lots of people wouldn't think it's much. What, just a course? But it means a lot to us. <coughs> After six months of preparation, the first classes in social coaching start in one of the buildings of the sports college in Rio. They will last a week and then be offered in four more Brazilian cities. Jorginho makes a star appearance at the opening. He played for the national side when Brazil won the World Cup in 1994 and was on the team when Bayern Munich topped the Bundesliga. When he retired from professional soccer, Jorginho founded the Bola Pra Frente Institute in the same favela where he grew up. Be passionate about your work. It's not meaningless. You can change human lives, the future. He's good at giving pep talks. If he hadn't become a soccer star, he would probably have become a pastor, he says, like his brother. When Jorginho was playing for Germany, he established a Bible study group for soccer players. The devout Pentecostal won FIFA's Fair Play Award. On the field and in everyday life, his faith is his strength. When I look back, what have I achieved? I've played great soccer on the national team, seen great stadiums, luxurious hotels, beautiful countries. But my life has to have more meaning. And then I can look back and say, I have really done something, not just for myself and my family, but for other people, for my neighbor. And I've learned a lot with Jesus Christ. They start with a game to give the participants a chance to get to know each other. From tall to short, no speaking. They come from various backgrounds. Former soccer professionals, teachers, students, a doctor who is an amateur coach. What do they have in common? They all work in the city's flashpoints, where they are often left to their own resources. A very important element in this course is that we discuss what we've experienced. We share our experiences, understand difficult situations, and then look for solutions. Often another coach could be working just two kilometers away and having the same problem, but they never communicate with each other. And one of the coaches has found a solution, and the other hasn't. The class is divided into groups to discuss the role of the coach. Franklin Ferreira's group says the most important thing is to give the kids attention and demonstrate responsibility. You have to become their friend. In a social project in the favela, we're very often a substitute family for the kids. He's developed new coaching methods for three age groups. They focus on four social areas, environment, health, equality, and violence prevention. That kind of coaching requires lots of preparation. Planning is taken very seriously in Germany. There, if you go onto the field without a formulated plan, it can get complicated. Is there anyone here who's done that? written out a coaching plan with a variety of exercises? Only one person. Sasha Bauer explains how a plan makes coaching more systematic in selecting suitable exercises, preparing them and not forgetting any aspect. 
In practice, this means repeating exercises regularly and dividing the players into small groups. That way, each kid gets a lot of contact with the ball, which increases their chance of success and encourages their self-confidence. Then it's on to the pitch to learn a training session that's tailored to six to eight year olds. Today we're going to talk about the environment. And one of the most important things is garbage separation. And you can do that in a number of ways. But you always start at the top. Lessons in recycling for two competing teams. The coaches do a good job of imitating their young players. They're really getting into it. Then comes a question and answer game. So, is big industry the only cause of environmental pollution? For this exercise, the kids will have to dribble quickly to the marker with the right answer. Red means no, white means yes. These cones represent trees, and we're not allowed to touch them. You can use various tricks. This, for instance. Okay, go. Ada Lucia Nascimento is one of just two women in the group. She started and coached her first girls team when she was 16. Since then, she's been involved in social soccer. She says she'll be able to apply the methods she learns here. It's fun and creative. We have to keep control of the ball and at the same time concentrate. That way we coach the kids' cognitive and intellectual abilities. They will be able to imagine that the trees really exist. And then we'll be able to start a little discussion on the subject. So let's assess what we've done today. Actually, it's simple. But people are so used to difficult things that they find it hard to simplify. The course will continue next year, but everyone feels they've learned a lot already. The course has given me a lot of ideas. When I introduce these methods in my favela, it'll be a revolution. The priest at Franklin Ferreira's church says everybody in his favela believes in God. There aren't any atheists. Although Protestant evangelists have been working in the favelas in recent years and winning converts, Brazil still has the largest Catholic population of any country in the world. The human being is a creator. We work for God to make a better world, a better society. Give us peace, they sing, in this favela plagued by drug-related violence. The priest himself runs a project to help kids distance themselves from the drug scene. He encourages his parishioners to get involved in social programs and see sport as an important aspect. Through sport, we rescue a lot of kids from the drug trade and addiction. Also through faith. They work together, faith and sport, hand in hand. I support Franklin's work with all my heart. I know that with his charisma, he is able to change the hearts of the young people, bit by bit. Work like his is indispensable. It provides a way out, a successful one. Of 
A short distance away in the northwest district of Jacare Pagua, Ada Lucia Nascimento is preparing her first session of social coaching for the kids, the way she's been taught to do. In this session, my aim is for them to think about gender a bit, about the inequality between the sexes. And I hope they like the exercise I've worked out. It's very unusual in Brazil, but here, girls and boys, ranging from 12 to 20-something, play together in this group. Sasha Bauer has come to watch. Now they'll do the card exercise. They'll take the ball up to there, turn around, in two groups, just like we learned. A memory game with homemade cards, all on the subject of gender differences. The first group to discover all the pairs wins. In the final round, the meaning behind the selected pictures is discussed. And why is that women's work? Which of the boys washes up at home? Tell the truth. Did you hear what Mauricio said? Why do you do the washing up? Because he doesn't have a woman to do it. Why do women get paid less for doing the same work? I see it in the supermarket where I work. There are only female cashiers because men would have to be paid more. Women used to just be housewives. Now they clean the house, work, study. And their husbands? Do they help? Is it just her child? No, it's his child too. Think about it. Especially the boys, when you have a wife and children one day. Before I come here, I have to tidy up the house. My brother doesn't. He says, I'm going to play soccer. And he goes. I don't wash dishes. Here the man works and brings home the money to buy everything the family needs. And the woman looks after the household. That may be macho, but that's the way it is. These machos, we tell them what we think, even if they don't agree. They get angry, but sometimes they also think about the other side of the story. So far, so good. Sasha Bauer offers to supervise the coach over a longer period and help her establish and develop the new method in her day-to-day -day work. I have to say Andalusia demonstrated a very high standard today. She has the right teaching skills, which you can't expect every coach to have. Many of them have a soccer background and not as much teaching experience. So I was delighted to see how she put the method into practice. This is Brazil's soccer temple. The Maracanã is one of the world's most famous stadiums. The World Cup final will be played here in July. The stadium is a magnet for the country's young hopefuls. Brazil is already the most successful team ever. It has already won the World Cup five times. None of the kids from the favela can afford a ticket. But they dream of one day entering the stadium wearing the Brazil jersey. They've already got it all worked out. Play abroad in a good team, then come back. All that matters is to play and get what you deserve. It's hard to become a professional today. 
Especially hard for kids like us from the favela. If I succeed, I want to support my family and Franklin's NGO, the project I belong to. As the world focuses on Brazil and the World Cup, Franklin Ferreira hopes that international awareness of social soccer will increase. Soccer is not just a sport. In many countries, it's a religion. Foreign investors are coming, and these kids could benefit. The World Cup must leave our country a social legacy, and I hope the projects benefit. The whole world has its eyes on Brazil. Naturally, we want to raise the approval and attention that projects get so that the NGOs receive more support at various levels, from politicians and from the business sector. And as far as the future world champions are concerned, there's no room for anything but confidence. For if God really is Brazilian, there's only one possible outcome.